CataractCoach.com, extended depth of focus IOLs, an analysis of the Alcon Vividi lens. You can see that central zone modification, which acts to elongate the depth of focus. So let's look at the lens here under the microscope before putting it in the eye, and look at the central optic. There are no diffractive rings, but certainly there's a zone with a beam shaping element, so chaining the wave front of the light that enters that central area. And you can see how it focuses or changes the shape of the reflected light beam there. So that's what we're talking about. Let's put that inside the eye here. It's on the standard Acrosoft platform, so single piece acrylic lens. And it's placed in the eye the same way you've been using other single piece acrylic lenses. And the key here is we have to really center up the lens. So we'll go and remove all the viscoelastic, certainly from behind the lens, because we want to precisely place the center of that optical zone right in the visual axis. And this patient fortunately also has a very small angle alpha and angle kappa, so the patient's visual axis is very close to those Purkinje images. So we'll seal up the incision here, and then we'll adjust the lens position, having the patient look in the center of those lights. Now there are no diffractive rings here, and because of that there is no increased nighttime haloing or rings around lights. However, you can't cheat physics, and so this extended depth of focus comes at the expense of a little bit of contrast. So there you can see there's that element, and this lens need to, needs to be centered just a little bit more. We want to get this lens exactly in the center. That looks pretty darn good. So let's talk a little bit about the optics of this lens. In fact, the optics of focusing. Now, ophthalmologists frequently use these two words interchangeably, depth of field and depth of focus. Well, they're actually different. Depth of focus is within the eye. Depth of field, as the name is, uh, sounds, is out in the field. And so for us, when we talk about depth of focus, the patient's more interested in the depth of field. They want to know what's the range that they'll be able to see without glasses. And this extended depth of focus lens does increase that depth of field for our patients and they're getting an increased intermediate zone in particular. So instead of having a near point of about a meter, that's brought into about 60 centimeters or so. And that's helpful to increase their range. Let's look at a few examples here. On the left is Plano, light focused right on the retina. The second one over is minus 150 myopia and the light's focused in front of the retina. The third image is our patients with mixed astigmatism. These patients often go around most of the day without any glasses, and that's because there are two distinct focal points, one at Plano and one at minus one and a half. But there is the associated blur around that. And on the right is the ideal extended depth of focus lens. And this gives a very clean focusing range of zero or Plano to minus 1.5. And that'd be a very, very suitable lens for most of our patients. But of course, that's ideal and theoretical. It doesn't really exist. Here's a small aperture lens, and that does increase the depth of focus, but it does it by blocking the peripheral light. So we have loss of light due to that pinhole effect, and that's a compromise. The Technus Symphony lens is a diffractive extended depth of focus lens, and it splits the light to give us that wider range, again from Plano to about minus 1.5. But it does induce halo and glare due to the diffractive rings. The Alconvivity is a beam shaping lens, so it alters the wavefront of those central light beams that come into the eye to give a little bit larger extended depth of focus, but it comes at a cost of loss of contrast. So in the FDA clinical study, which I've listed here, you can see it's about one line better intermediate vision and one line better near vision. And that's, of course, with both eyes corrected for 2020 for both monofocal and vividity. But remember, it does decrease contrast. And here is an image showing about 20 to 30 percent decreased contrast. And this is an estimation, of course. But the package insert from Alcon also states that there will be a loss of contrast. If we look here, and this is from a paper published by Alcon, we can see the Alcon monofocal lens gives about one diopter of depth of focus or depth of field. 
The Vividi, a little bit more, about minus one and a half. And the Panoptics, of course, is the widest range. So monofocal lens is distance only, about one diopter range. In the middle here, the Vividi will give us distance vision and intermediate vision. That's about one and a half diopters of range. But remember, there's some loss of contrast. And the Panoptics on the right gives us the distance, the intermediate, and the near with about two and a half diopters of range, but there's certainly the loss of contrast as well as nighttime glare and halo. Here's a simple summary chart to show you the visual range with each lens type. And this is, of course, without glasses. The purple line is a cataract in our typical patient, which is obviously very poor vision. And the bright green line at the top is what a young person has and we will never get back again. And then we can see the three different IOLs there. The green line that's dark is a human lens at age 50. The yellow line is a monofocal lens. It's about the same as that. The blue line is the panoptics, which compromises some of the quality of vision, but gives a much wider range. And then splitting the difference is the orange line, which is that vividity lens, the extended depth of focus lens. Looking at the modulation transfer function here on the left, you can see there is some contrast loss, but we do gain an increased depth of field or depth of focus. And then similarly, with the defocus curve, we can see that increased depth of focus that we achieve by using this wavefront shaping. My take on the Alcon Vividi lens is that it's a welcome addition to our spectrum of different IOL options. As cataract surgeons, we want to have the most tools in the toolbox so we can customize the surgery and the visual outcome for each specific patient and even each individual eye. Now, like all IOLs, it has to obey the laws of physics. So by elongating that extended depth of field by about a half diopter, there's a compromise in the quality of the contrast, especially at night. The good news is, since there are no diffractive rings, we avoid the glare, halo, and ring effect that you get from that diffractive technology. So the ideal patient with this lens is going to be someone with a nice, regular cornea and a normal macula. Give the lens a try, and please report back and let me know your take on this new technology.